Hello YouTube, this is TerraForce88, and today I'm going to be giving a belated birthday shout out to Adobe Photoshop. Um, as, some, as some of you may know, Photoshop turned 20 somewhat recently. I believe the latest version is Creative Suite, Photoshop Creative Suite 5, maybe 6. I personally use Elements 6 on my modern day computer, but what I'm going to do today for the birthday celebration is load up the very first version of Photoshop ever released to the public, Photoshop 1.0.7 for the Macintosh. And this is this screen that you're seeing here is a Macintosh LC2 from 1992 with um, a 16 megahertz Motorola 680 30 processor, four megabytes, not gigabytes, megabytes of RAM. The hard drive is not the original, it's an 800 megabyte hard drive that's currently in this. It used to be an 80 megabyte hard drive. Um, now this particular LC2 has the 512 kilobyte video RAM upgrade. Normally these LC2s only had 256 kilobytes of video RAM, which meant that the 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 maximum number of colors that could be displayed on LC2 was 256 or 8-bit color. With the 512K video RAM upgrade, you can display thousands of colors or 16-bit color on the standard Macintosh 12-inch RGB display that you're seeing here. So without further ado, and that's what this is running at right now, so without further ado, let's launch Photoshop 1.0.7. Now you may notice some weird smearing effects going on with my monitor. Um, that's because the video circuitry isn't working 100% on this Macintosh. There is 1990. And... Like, if I were to lower the bit depth, like lower it to 256 or 60 colors, you'd see all kinds of weird garbage going on. It's least noticeable in the 16-bit modes or in 256 gray. So, as you can see, watch the desktop as it kind of smears. That's not from my camcorder. The line going down the screen is, but the smearing isn't. So, you're going to have to bear with me there. So, we're going to open up an image. We're going to open up um, <clears throat> sample4.tiff. <clears throat> now this image, I just pulled off the internet, but this Mac cannot obviously access the internet. I had to do some, some pretty interesting floppy disk conversions. Um, okay, so that is the full thing. So we have this little rainbow pinwheel thing going on. So the first thing we're going to do is, I guess, use the rectangular marquee tool, um, which you can um, do a constrained aspect ratio or do that. This is an elliptical marquee tool with, um, oh, that would help if I did a constrained aspect ratio on that. I'll know that for next time. But let's do the rectangular marquee for now. And what we're going to do is kind of sort of select a word. Now, to make multiple selections, you have to hold the uh, shift key. So... Now, the video that's of Photoshop 1.0 that's already on the internet, it's showing it running on like a Mac Plus or a Mac SE, which it might actually be a Mac Plus now that I think of it, um, which of course only has that one bit color display. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Undo marquee. Oh, oh okay. Phew. Okay, that kind of scared me there. Oh, nice. There we go. I wonder then if I can do that. 
No, it didn't work. Anyway, so now I have the kind of a portion, a region of the image selected. So now we can do some adjustments, or we can invert it if we wanted to. Pretty dramatic. Or you can adjust levels and curves, um, brightness, contrast, color balance. I'm just going to demonstrate real quickly a few things here. Color balance. Actually, I wanted... Uh, actually, let's... That was a bit of a waste. Adjust. Hue saturation. Preview. Ooh. Minus one eighty. Now I don't know what the colorize thing does. Oh, that just cranks up the saturation all the way, which we don't want. Now let's just do uh, adjust. It's going to map um, invert. That'll work for now. So now we have the word color. Now what we're going to do is use the elliptical marquee tool. Now if you hold the shift key down, it'll actually draw it. Well, no. Normally, if you hold it, it kind of draws in the diagonal, which is kind of annoying. And if you were to move this, I can actually remove it from the... Um... Oh, wait. <laughs> that was a mistake. Um, I forgot to uh, deselect the word color. You have to go to select, and then... Now you have to go to... Where is it? I I actually know the keyboard shortcut, but I'm I for, I'm curious as to uh, oh select none, and it, the I was looking for deselect because it's Command D is the um, actual shortcut. So with the circle, if you hold the Option key down on the keyboard, it'll actually start drawing from the middle, which that didn't quite work. Let's go about there-ish. Oh, I'm trying to get this centered, but I don't want to waste too much time on it. Ah, close enough. So now, now we're going to do a filter effect. And there's quite a few. Some of them don't do much. Others take way too much time. I'm going to just show you the mosaic effect, which is just a basic pixelization. We're going to bump this up to a 16 pixel square. And now we've pixelized it. Command D to deselect that. Um, <coughs> this is a lasso tool. You can adjust the feather there. Um, this, I believe, is a magic wand tool. Which Photoshop, which it's basically a magic selection tool, sort of. Um, except, let's crank the tolerance up to like 64. There we go. Why did I... Oops. Screwed that up. How are we doing on time? Oh, I gotta figure out which button it is. Nope. Okay. Nine minutes. It's already taken way too long. Um, let's type in some uh, text real quick. Actually, no, let's, um, yeah, let's do text. And what we're going to do is we're going to start about right here. I'll do Helvetic, no, not Hell's Programmer. And we're going to go to, let's try 16.5. Do Shadow. Let's do Outline. No, let's do Shadow.
see how big this text is. Ah, nice. Except, I don't think it's all gonna fit. Shit. It isn't. Try that again. Let's do 14 pot. 14. Oh, good. I don't have to type it all over again. That's nice of you, Photoshop. <coughs> Apparently, this was made just before Mac OS 7 was released because all the um, Photoshop window controls are like in monochrome versus the um, um, the uh, actual thing there. There you have it. Um, and let's see, 11 minutes. Make this quick. Um, this, of course, is a um, the um, the the dropper. You can see that that's the selection square going. Uh, paint bucket. I'm sure I can set options there. Tolerance and fuzziness again. Hand tool, magnify tool, crop tool, <clears throat> um, line, eraser, basic pencil. And I can actually do this um, if I do 50%. And then do something like this. Oh, I can do custom. I wonder what custom does, but I don't, I don't, we don't have time for that, so, um, oh, wait, I screwed that up, not great, go to our color picker, but these rainbow lines shouldn't be there, it's just because this thing doesn't render right, there's our rainbow. Hello YouTube. This is the oh, it's the airbrush. Ha! -ha. Um, brush. That's a smudge tool. This is a stamp tool. Uh, blur and sharpen. The clone stamp tool is already here. Um, and these you can have all different kinds of. And just like in regular Photoshop, if I try to use it without selecting a source. You have to option click to define a source. And now watch. I'm cloning. That's a really bad cloning example, I know, but well, <clears throat> well that does it that's about it for um, Photoshop 1.0, so let me save this. We're gonna call this um, Earth A2. And you can save it as different formats. JPEG isn't here yet. So. Macintosh. And finally, there's three different views. There's this view. There's the image view with uh, this, the toolbar. And then image only view on a black background with no menu bar, no nothing. And there it is. That blue smearing is again caused by the video circuitry not quite working right with this with on this machine. Um, so now we're gonna quit. Um, that's Photoshop 1.0. This is Terraforce 88 signing out.